Hello and welcome back to Mashup, your weekly installment of everything. I'm your host Lachlan Scott and here is one and only Ahmed Musa. Hey guys, on tonight's show, we'll be given another demo by fitness expert Nathan Jones. Our challenge boys head out for another money making idea and a very small band will perform right here in the studio. So strap yourselves in and brace for the weird, wacky and wonderful one off for tonight. That's right, don't go anywhere because right now we are shooting to Sophie who went out to the RSPCA Adoption Centre to tempt you all with some very adorable pets. Also, watch this space because my hair will magically grow in four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. You watch. <laughs> Hi, it's Soph from Mashup and we're here with Dean, the adoption officer at the RSPCA here in Burwood East. Let's get this tour started. So on our left, as you can see here, we have our cat adoption centre. Now, this area can hold between 30 to 40 cats at a time. What our aim is to come in, let people introduce them, get to know them, and you know, hopefully find them all in your home. So how about we come in and we'll meet a few of our furry friends. We're in the cattery department. Cattery. So, and cat adoption. How many cats would you have in here? We would generally put about five or six in here. Um, just because cats, they can be quite territorial, so we don't want to make them oh, really? cranky. Yeah, absolutely. Why are they like that? Cats in nature, they're solitary animals, so uh -huh. they don't crave companionship like a lot of us think they do. So like dogs. Like, exactly. So they're quite happy to spend their days just you know, lazing about. There's this really good quote, is that um, dogs have masters and cats have slaves. Why is pet adoption always the better option? The main reason is you're giving an animal a second chance at life. And you know, who doesn't want to give an animal that sort of chance? Yeah. Um, the negatives of going to a pet shop is you're not always getting that history on the animal. You're not getting the parental history. You're not getting the health guarantees. And you don't know where to come from. You don't know what sort of circumstance. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And it is cheaper. And they're cuter here. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. My job is the most rewarding job in the world. I think we want to make aware to people is that, you know, buying a pet, it's not an impulse buy. There is a lot of thought going into it and a lot of ongoing costs as well. Each animal does have its own personality and you can't judge that on what you do see in a window. Yeah. Education really is the key. It's gone. And there he goes. <laughs> he, he doesn't want you to adopt a cat. He wants you to get a dog. Let's go. Let's go talk to this guy. It's true. about the RSPCA and what work you do here? Sure, so for those who don't know, the RSPCA is a non-for-profit animal organisation. Um, we have various sites across Victoria, Burwood East being our largest one. Our role here is, you know, look after animals what have been mistreated, lost, yeah. abused, and hopefully find them really, really, really good homes. Yeah. Um, we have hundreds of volunteers, staff, who, you know, work around the clock to make sure that, you know, all of them are being cared for, I guess you can say. Yeah. So my job at RSPCA is I'm an adoption officer. Okay. So I get to find these, you know, friendly canine friends, cats, everything else, you know, new and loving homes. So you love your job, don't you? I love my job. <laughs> so like I said, creatures big and small. So here we have our little Easter bunny friends. So rabbits, you know, they're pretty complicated creatures that a lot of people don't realize. So rabbits, they can live up to 10 years and they require a lot of exercise, but a lot of people don't realise. So, really? four hours running each day. For a rabbit? For a rabbit. Four hours running each day. Did you guys know that? No. So, they're a big commitment. They are. As all pets are. As all pets are. Rabbits make great pets for people who work full time, because yeah. they're most active in the morning and yeah. in the afternoon. Okay. So, you know, perfect when you're here. <laughs> Where can we um, get more information? No worries. Well, what you can do, just check out our website, www.rspcavic.org. Yep. And, you know, come down and meet some of our furry little friends here like those are. That's, that's the mashup. <coughs> and what's going to say? Um, have you got 50 bucks I can borrow you? Sorry, what was that? 50 bucks. Have you got 50 bucks I can borrow you? Sorry, start again? Oh, Jesus. 50 bucks. Have you got 50 bucks I can borrow you off, please? You're gonna have to speak up, man. I can't hear you. What do you mean you can't hear me? What's wrong? Now, last week when I came back from Afghanistan, 
The bloody grenade will explode right in my ear. I can't listen out of this one. You have to talk speak to this one. Uh, 100 bucks. Have you got 100 bucks I can borrow of you? Jesus Christ, the price is double. Stick to this here, man. It's cheaper. Hey, guys. We're joined again by fitness expert Nathan Jones. Welcome, Nathan. Pleasure to be here. Hey. So, Nate, you're here to tell us a little bit about high-intensity interval training. And could you explain to us a bit about what it is? So, it's... Um High intensity interval training is a, is a shorter regime. Um, conventional other training regimes go from anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Because of the intensity levels of this kind of training, it's, it's narrowed down to about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, all, it's all geared around working at your maximum heart rate for a short amount of time, around about 30 seconds, and then recovering for the same time as well, about 30 seconds with complete recovery. Yep. So um, would you recommend this type of training to beginners? Because it sounds like a really intensive um, workout. Probably not. I mean, I think it's it good to come into a gym or coming into your training environment to be just at more steady state training where you can just get used to having your heart rate lifted, get used to movement and just get yourself generally started off. And once you've been into exercise for a couple of months and, you're, and your routine is seeing you exercise right across a week, then it's nice to add it in as a wee spike to your training regime. Yep. Now, how is it different, different to a regular gym workout? Well, I think regular gym training is, is what we call more steady state training. So you're working at a more moderate to high intensity for a long amount of time. With this high intensity interval training, it's got more big bang exercises, which I'm going to be able to talk to you guys a little bit about more and show you guys later. So we can think about big conventional moves like squats, clean and presses, even burpees that really lift the heart rate fast and hard where you're working without air for a short amount of time and then you completely rest. So other exercise regimes you keep moving for whatever time, but these ones we completely stop so the heart rate can come down. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to spike the heart rate as high as it can and then we want to drop it out. So you can do that quite regularly over about a 30 minute time. Yeah, so um, maybe for all our viewers at home who want to know more about it and maybe they want to know what the benefits are from cool. high intensity training. Yeah, and I mean great benefits. I think the great thing about this is if we are doing it for only 30 minutes, it's helped us because we're a lot more time poor. Yeah. Um, but more importantly than that, you burn a lot more calories at this kind of training because of the level of the heart rate. Um, you're getting fitter faster too because your body gets used to working at maximum level and you work into what we call our threshold. And our threshold is our maximum heart rate or maximum of what our body can sustain for a short amount of time. And if we keep working into that threshold and keep lifting our threshold, everything about us becomes fitter even the way we train at a steady state. So, I mean, burning more calories, getting fitter faster, and you're even burning calories post-workout as well. Yep. So it's just, it's just a big all-round winner. Well, well, thanks, Nate, for that information. Hopefully people can benefit from what you had to say. Awesome. Thank now, you. Now, stick around after the break, guys, because he's going to be showing us a demo and some of these burpees, were they called? Yeah, let's do some burpees. Looking forward to that. Hey guys, welcome back to Mashup. Now we're here again with Nathan Jones. He's going to show us a little demo about high intensity interval training. Now I'll give you the floor, Nathan. Perfect. So at a more advanced level and obviously under the guidance of a fitness professional, we have things we're using now called burpees. Um, really good for shunting the blood all around the body and really lifting the heart rate, getting you in the anaerobic training zone. So real quick demo, we've probably seen them when we're growing up, but I'll show you anyway. Hands down, jump back, jump in, jump up. One, two, three, four. So we do a lot of that too because it challenges the body, you know, up to 30 seconds as fast as you can to keep yeah. in that high intensity level. And then from there you have a complete recovery. So whatever you need to do just to bring the heart rate down. And I mean, at a more simple level, um, if you're doing stuff like on a treadmill, you'd be moving as fast as you can. So even if you're on the spot, you'd be sprinting as quick as you can, using your arms, using your legs, driving yourself as much as you can, and then again back into complete recovery. So still gently moving, but just letting the heart rate come down so then I can perform again at high intensity all the way throughout my 30 second workout. Yep. 30 minute workout, not 30 seconds. Yep. 30 seconds so definitely recovery. people. So definitely people need to be careful when they're doing this kind of training. They just need to be guided well and they need to be under the guidance of a, a fitness professional and just know what they're doing and why. But again, the big message is it's short, it's sharp, yep. and it really drives great results quickly. Great. Well, uh, thanks for that, Nathan, for your quick demonstration. Pleasure. Hopefully uh, we'll get to see you next week and show us a bit more. Sweet, man. Thank you. This is Mashup. What up, Mashers? Lachlan Scott here. 
Have you ever thought to yourself what the world would be like without social media? Not very different, I wager. We'd probably still be using carrier pigeons and snail mail though. But how would we find out all of that important information, like what your favourite celebrity had for dinner, or what your colleague thinks of his cheating ex-wife? What is this dependency doing to our society? Text messaging is easily the most convenient and accessible way to send information to another person. But some people have taken this system and used it to completely substitute a phone call or even face-to-face -face interaction. Whatever happened to meeting your friends at a cafe and sharing a coffee? It's almost like a get out of jail free card. I can send a text message to my boss saying that I'm sick and can't work at all, thus cutting out any unwanted interaction with them and they will be none the wiser. Hello, Lachlan Scott speaking. Oh, yeah. I'm, re I'm really, really sick. <coughs> it's contagious. <coughs> that was close. Compulsive status updates. We all know a few, I'm sure. People who feel the need to tell everyone what they had for lunch, what they found underneath their couch cushions, or even inform everyone of the very obvious weather conditions. Actually, it is getting kind of windy. I think I'd better tell someone. But that's not all I get up to. No, we don't want to hear about how you burn a lasagna. We don't want to hear about how you stepped in chewing gum. And we most definitely do not need to see that photo. Delete it. Just delete it. Yes, social media is convenient, accessible to most and simple to use. And the majority of people have adapted their lifestyles around it. But even with the advancement of technology, I still believe we are becoming more primitive. For example, cavemen used to write cryptic messages on their walls that only members of their own clan could interpret. Hey guys, and today I'm here with a very small band. No, that's actually their name, a very small band. Um, for starters, we'll get you guys to introduce yourselves. Do you want to go first? I'm Dirty Petey. Right. Mandre. I'm Randy Rod. Are they actually your name? So yeah, it's on the birth certificate. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Do you guys have to? Uh, the Rod doesn't carry his with him. Just take a word for it. Okay, I take your word oh, for it. We're, we're just great friends. We've played music for a long time, and and these guys are the best. And I'm, I love playing music with them. And it's a privilege. Very kind words, Pete. Thank you. <laughs> That's all you have to say. <laughs> uh, well, he complimented uh, you. I put so. my heart out in front of everybody. <laughs> Pit, Pit and I used to live together. We um, oh, thank you. We uh, we lived together, and he wrote a lot of the songs uh while we were sort of staying in this house. So you know, they mean a lot to him, but they also mean a lot to me. But especially to Pete. But especially <laughs> to me. Oh, so I mean, yeah, Dirty Petey. Yeah. I think you just revealed that his name isn't Dirty Pete. No. So. Have you guys got an EP or an album coming out? Anything? Good? I think you should mention that actually. We got a we got an album. I'll just we go got a surprise. I, can't, I couldn't contain my excitement. Here you go. You gave me a shoe in a box. Just take them. That was a shoe. Thank you. Thanks. A deodorant. You'll need that, mate. Oh, thanks. And some keys. Whose keys are these? I will be yours. And my wallet. Yeah, take it. But this is my wallet. It doesn't matter. And at the bottom we have some CDs. And you want one of them too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, is this your actual? This is, this is the album. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to tell me a bit about it? Okay, so this is a, a very small band's album. It's uh, ten dollars, very modestly priced. You see, this is the cover. You open it up here. There's a CD. There's music on it, and it spins around if you're not into listening to music. It's got a um, eight-page booklet. You see, there's pictures. And it's I'm got sure people love pictures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're pretty, and it's got music on it. And what we do is we get <laughs> guest singers on there. Okay. So this one features uh, Christy Glab, Alistair Moulding, Rachel Comte, Grant Cameron, Matt Gerdes, and whoever I've forgotten will be terribly offended. But I think that's all. <laughs> is there anyone going to be joining you today? No, no. But but today we'll play um, Since the Day, which Christy Glab sang on, and she's she's just something else. It's really amazing. So she's not going to be performing on our show today. No, no. So who's going to be doing it? I'll do it. Should he, I do it? He's a, he's a very good impersonator. He's very versatile. So where else yeah, can we find you guys? 
Uh, uh, Facebook. Facebook. And? Oh, uh, the web. We've got a website. What is it? A very small band. Dot. Dot com. On the internet. So thank you very much for joining me on the show today. It was really nice talking to you all and I look forward to seeing you at the end of the show performing. It'll be very interesting to see. Join us after the break because we've got the Challenge Boys back out on the streets. And... Man. A long time no see, brother. Man, come out. Where have you been? I haven't seen you for ages. School, work, you know how it is. How about you, man? The same, man. Girlfriend, school, work. Busy, man. Very busy. No time, man. No time, man. Well, we've got to catch up soon. Yeah, brother. man. Anyway, let me know, eh? Yeah, I'll call you soon, brother. Take care. Enjoy. Oh, yeah. Do you have any ciggies? Yeah, of course, brother. Here you go. Minka man, I done your favor. This thing kill you. Trust me. Ciao. What do you mean it kills me? Come here! We're here today in Box Hill for the $100 challenge. Guy's got some games that he wants to play with some people, but I'm not sure if they're a scam or not. <laughs> we'll find out. the red thing. What do you get out of the bottom part? <laughs> no, we've got, uh, I've got a big clock. Fair dinkum. I'll show you a big clock. <laughs> you can land a, a 50 cent coin on that. You can have this clock. That stone or something. No, no, no. But that money there, nobody's wanting to even get. No, they haven't won anything because they got they got to, got to land it on the on the red thing. Yeah. I'll go to the bank for a bit. Look. I need a song to sing. Playing Angry Birds. Go, get him, get him, get him, get him. I'm just waiting for that one right person who's gonna think they can do this. I've actually got some decent prizes. I don't know why people don't come. You might need to rethink. Close. Here you are. Take that. Now what you got to do, see that tin, see there? You got to get it on there. Well, oh, it's close. We missed that one. <laughs> Must be some kind of luck. Trick to it. I couldn't tell you, I really don't know. Yeah, we'll try again. You ready? You ready? We okay. missed the game. Oh, there you go. Oh. I got it. That's 50 cents. Ooh, are you getting there? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> 
What is that? That looks It's like a, it's a compressed beach towel. Oh, oh Jim Beam. Yes, beach mad. Towel. Go Thank for you. it. That's right. You gonna have a go? <laughs> Oh, he's done even one! Oh, there you go! Hold well on! What? I have a clock. Seriously? Yeah. I'm, I'm being cleaned out. Take the bite. See ya. Hello. Just need that. Oh, oh, I got that. Yes. Alright, we have got four ninety-five, five dollars and five cents, five dollars and fifteen, five twenty-five, five thirty-five, five fifty. Well, we've come to the end of another episode of Mashup. Make sure you like us on Facebook and share any opinions you may have on any of tonight's topics. Be sure to tune in next week where we look into the elaborate act of spooning and hear from another hilarious comedian. Hang on, we still need a very small band to perform. Small band? Yeah, okay, but who are they? A very small band. Yeah, but what's their name? You'll see. <laughs> Good night, Good night Ashes. Ashes. We'll see, see you next week. week. Is he to tell us what is right or wrong?